Hello, everyone. My name is Robbie Heath, and we are uh, missionaries in, me and my family, we were missionaries in Kenya, East Africa, and just a little bit north of Malawi. And my wife is back here in the back, and my son Vernon, they are with me today. Uh, we have two other children uh, in one of the, some of the programs in the church. I don't know where they are. <laughs> but uh, uh, we, this is uh, a nice picture of a tree. I hope you enjoy that picture of the tree. It's nice. Uh, th we do have a family under, under it, if you can see that. Um, I, I like the tree, so it's nice. Um, so, oh, this is the, uh, so which one's the next? Down is next. Perfect. All right, so in the, the time that we have been in uh, Kenya, we have been involved in many ministries. But let me back up just uh, one moment uh, and s say that I, I recognize some of the people who ha were in the missions classes at Grace Bible College, or uh, sorry, GCU. And uh, I just wanted to recognize you guys and say, uh, I hope I don't repeat myself so too much, um, but they had the opportunity of, of hearing me drone on about missions and trying to push them to uh, become missionaries. So um, I'm really happy and, uh, you know, yeah, we, you, you have some uh, future missionaries in your midst. So um, we are, uh, when we were here five years ago, we were on our way to South Africa and there was a, a number of reasons that did not work for us. We, uh, we were trying to get a, a work permit to, to be legally in the country, uh, more than just a, for a tourist visa, and uh, that did not work. Uh, we, we tried and tried and tried, and uh, we were not able to, uh, to get that. So after six months, we made the decision to, uh, to transfer uh, to Kenya. And so we were able to get our visa real quick, and we, we went there, and we've been there uh, for four years. And so... Um, we are very happy uh, with that move because we were just sitting here in America waiting to go. And I, I wanted to thank uh, the church here at Frontline for supporting us in, in that tr transition, right? We, uh, we, we were planning on going one place and you uh, came with us and you maintained that support even when we were going to a new field. And so thank you so much for that. Um, we... When we came to Kenya, we were involved straight away in church planting. This was in 2019 uh, when we went there. And we have uh, one of the churches I wanted to talk about this morning was a church in Kaiole. And this is kind of in the inner city in, um, in Nairobi. And so Nairobi is the capital city. And so people who... Uh, come from the village, they want opportunity, they, they come from the village and they, uh, they want to get a job, so they come to a slum area. And so there are, are a couple different slums in Nairobi. Uh, the first one, maybe you, um, oh shoot, I can't think of the name just right now. But there, this is, a, oh, come on, this is going to bug me. <laughs> There's two different, uh, Kibera, there we go. Kibera slum is one of them, and it's the biggest slum. And uh, we have some friends, actually, who have been working uh, there, uh, not with our mission, but uh, we, you know, there, are, there is some work there. Uh, we, we are in Kaiole, which is the second biggest slum. It's a developing slum, and so there, the, you know, we've, it's gone from temporary buildings, now there, there are some uh, developing structures who, that are going up, and but still, it is a a place that is uh, with the the crime is rampant. There's uh, you know pickpocketers. There's uh, lots of drug use, drug dealing. There's lots of prostitution, all in that area. And uh, of course, the the alcohol use is through the roof, and uh, a lot of depressed people. They came for work and they weren't able to get it. Or maybe they are working, but they're consuming all of the money on alcohol or something like that. So um, we have a church there and uh, we are working with uh, Pastor um, 
Patrick Kile, and he and his family. Um, you might be confused. That, that, that's not a hat. Um, I, I use this picture because it's the, the best one we have when we first got there. Uh, it's actually like a gig bag with a guitar. So it's a guitar. It's not a hat. It's not his hair either. So uh, Pastor Kile came from kind of a village area, and he came into the, the, the city life, and he's living there right at the church um, in this this slum area, and it's it was a big change for him coming from the village and now coming into the city, and uh, he has been faithful in that uh, in that environment even through COVID, all all of the lockdowns. He has remained at that church and remained faithful, and so I, we we as missionaries can't do it without faithful people who come alongside us and do the work with us. So. Uh, I, I thank him so much. Um, during 2019, there was a, a time that I was working uh, uh, almost every week, maybe two or three times, I would be going to Kaiole, which is about uh, 30 minutes to an hour away from where we live. And uh, it was there that I met a man by the name of Wilson. I was walking down the road, and in the 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 muddy streets of Kaiole, and I uh, had to park my car away from the church because I was not able to navigate the streets to get there. And so I was walking to the church uh, to meet with the pastor. I was late. I was really upset because I was a new missionary and trying to get there on time, and it was really frustrating. Uh, anyway, uh, I heard some, some noise behind me. There was a, a man calling out, Mzungu, which is... Uh, you know, a, a, a word for white man or a word for foreigner. You know, you, you, you foreigner, look at me, right? <laughs> and, uh, you know, at that time, it was very frustrating. I said, I'm late. I can't talk to you. I have to go. Um, so eventually, I, though, I, I turned around and I, I talked to this man. And uh, he, he and his four friends were asking me all sorts of questions. And so finally, I decided... Let me share the gospel with him uh, and make this, this uh, worthwhile encounter. <laughs> and so I shared the gospel with him, and he turned that and immediately started asking me very essential questions like, how many wives can I have? <laughs> and, uh, you know, things like that. And, uh, you know, I decided, okay, I don't know if he's ready. <laughs> you know, it, it, his mind is very, very much uh, in a different place than, than it should be. So I... I said, I, got, I have to go. I have to go to the church. And he says, let me uh, go with you. So he, he escorted me. And this guy, I don't know if you can see in the picture, he's, he's a, like a bodybuilder. So he, he, he and his friends of bodybuilders, they, like, they escorted me to the, to the, to the church. And it, was, it, was, it felt like I was safe. I was like, ah, yes, these guys, they, uh, they will protect me. And uh, we get to the church, and he, he was... Uh, you know, not ready still to give his life to Christ, but he met the pastor, and uh, he promised to come in the in the evening for our evening service, and to our shock, he came. So he came to the service, and uh, it was there that I presented uh, the gospel to him uh, in a in a I would say uh, an easy to understand way. Uh, he he told me later that he had never heard the gospel um, presented in, a, in a, such a simple way. Uh, because if we know the gospel, it's Christ crucified, right? That it's Jesus Christ. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through him, right? For us to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, we will be saved. Those are, are very simple things, and it's not just a simple, like, it's not just catchphrases. It's not a... And, and the gospel is very simple, and he doesn't have to come to the church and give a donation. He doesn't have to come and be healed by the pastor in order to be saved. No, <laughs> it's a personal relationship with his Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so I presented that to him through, uh, I think it was John 1, where, he talks, where John uh, the Baptist says, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And so I related that back to the Passover and how 
Israel was excited and looking forward to the coming of the Messiah uh, th through their, their sacrificial system. And so he gave his life to Christ. Uh, Wilson, at that, that day, he gave his life to Christ. And from that day on, so this is another example of a partner, someone who's partnering in the ministry. He uh, would, would grab his, his friends, many of them also bodybuilders, and, uh, and he would grab them and say, uh, I have someone to talk to you. And, and so he, he, would, uh, come, he would ask us, okay, tell my friend exactly what you told me. And so he was not feeling strong enough to, to say it on his own. He wanted us to, to tell it. And so uh, we, many people came to Christ that way and came through that ministry. Uh, he is still a, a member of the church, and uh, he was telling me that uh, this was a couple, a couple weeks before we came. We were at the church, and he said, you know that day that I met you? <laughs> I was drunk. And that's why I was, uh, I was so uh, aggressive in calling after you. I, I said, but when I came back, I, I had sobered up, and he was ready to hear the gospel. So, you know, you, you talk to whoever is, is there with you. And that's something I learned with church planting is that you cannot, uh, you cannot just turn people away. You have to be in the moment and ready to put aside anything that you had planned and to be with that person and to, to do life with them in, on their terms, in their way, in their time, right? It's, it's, it's their time. It's not mine. And so um, that's something else I had to learn as an American missionary <laughs> in a place that time is, is very relative. This here is uh, some of the kids, uh, some of our kids. This is actually Vesper on the left. And... Uh, Vesper and uh, back there. I, names don't come to me. Um, Josh, Joash, there you go. And uh, then there's Vernon and and uh, his his friend James, and they are the the pa the sons of uh, of the pastor, Pastor Kile. And so it was a pleasure uh, ministering with my family in kind of a rough area, but it was a it was a an amazing experience, I would say, for the kids. And uh, during a, in in our kids' presentation, we're going to show some pictures of of what it's like being as a kid being in some of these, you know, kind of remote areas or maybe some rougher areas. And so, as is the the custom in Kenya, uh, the the church in Kaiole, they they greet the church here in America. And they're, they're all waving to you, okay? And they, uh, it's my responsibility to say, do you accept their greeting? Yeah. Yes, perfect. I will, re I will reply to them. And uh, I, I, was, uh, I was told recently that um, I needed to take, to take a picture of you guys accepting that greeting. So, <laughs> I, because, I, I mean, that, that would be really bad of me not to. So, I don't know, I can't really... Here, I'm going to take two pictures. One over here and then one over there. Okay, perfect. Thank you, guys. <laughs> um, so, what's better than, than working with, uh, in church planting, which I, I, I loved doing the church planting. Uh, during 2019, we, that was our only ministry, uh, aside from beginning to set up a Bible school. And so, we, when we came to Kenya, there was no Bible school. And so it was our responsibility to work with that and to, to uh, build that school from the ground up. Uh, and it's called Kenya Grace Bible Institute. And so in 2020, we began. Uh, and it's our desire. Uh, K KGBI, Kenya Grace Bible Institute, offers biblical pastoral and theological training to men and women who have a desire to serve God and it equips and prepares them to effectively reach the world with the message of the grace of God, right? We, this is our desire, is to, to train people to now train others. And we, we are, are very strong with the 2 Timothy 2.2 uh, two, two principle of, of training people, training uh, reliable, honest, good people who are now going to 
turn around and train other people, right? We, we don't want to train people who are going to just keep it for themselves because that is a waste, right? They, they will have received uh, the grace of God, you might say, in vain, right? We need to train people who are going to turn around and train people. So like I said, in uh, 2019, we... 20, yeah, 2019, we began to build the building, and here's the groundbreaking project. And this next uh, picture, this is the, uh, the school as of today. Uh, we, my, my family, we, uh, uh, in 2022, we decided to build a, a, a two-bedroom apartment on top of the school building so that uh, for us, when we return to Kenya, we are going to have a place to stay. In the future, when people come to visit and we are not there, it will be a place for them to come and stay and, uh, and live, potentially to teach at the school. We, I, I am uh, responsible for a lot of teaching and also a lot of the, the behind the scenes, the administration of the school. And in, on the, the left here is actually one of our students who returned after graduation to teach. So he is one of the teachers who is taking over for me. Uh, you know, we, we really instilled it in him that it was possible to, to learn, you know, to come to Bible school to learn, but then to stay and teach. And he, he was very excited to do that. Uh, in, in our ministry, we, we go and uh, do a lot of... Um, uh, say, uh, what is it, outreaches, there you go, uh, where we go and we, we go to some of the, uh, the churches in Kenya and we uh, work in the churches, we, we do some evangelism, we do some, uh, uh, some open air preaching, things like that. This is on the way back, actually this is overlooking the Rift Valley, uh, the Great Rift Valley, and uh, you can see that we, are, we have blankets on because it was really cold up there. So, um, let's see here. These are the, uh, the three graduates who we graduated in October of uh, the last year. They uh, are, they have, re each one of them has, uh, you know, been, become uh, pastors, and they are involved in ministry in uh, one way or another. Uh, one of, two of them are in churches, and the other one is uh, he's taken some some time to decide. Um, <clears throat> this is uh, the KGBI kitchen. To have a Bible school, you need a kitchen. And so uh, funds were raised through our partners here in America. And I, I, don't, I think that some of you maybe have uh, had donated for this project. Before, we had just, so on the left-hand side, there's a picture of our one-room uh, kitchen where they were cooking for, you know, 20 or more people, and it was a very difficult uh, just one room to be in. So uh, on the right is our, the modern kitchen that we were able to build. And this is a, uh, I, I just wanted to thank uh, those of you who, uh, who gave for this project. Uh, we could not do it without you. And we go back, actually, you can see that it, the, the project is still going on. We built the kitchen. Now we need to build the dining room, which is going to be, uh, in order to cut costs, it's not going to be enclosed. It's going to be a, like an open-air dining room. So trying to pinch pennies wherever we can. And so what are we going to do in the future? Here is uh, myself and my father-in-law. Uh, as I don't know if any of you know, but my, my wife uh, was born on the mission field. She was born in Kenya in Nairobi Hospital. And her and her parents and her siblings, they were missionaries in Kenya for many, many years. Now, we are, we have, she has returned with her family to be missionaries in Kenya. Now, that is something that I feel like is necessary in order to, uh, to complete the training, complete the, the work that was started many years ago, and to encourage the, the people in Kenya to, to take the ministry to the next place, to the, the next um, 
level, you could say. They, they like talking about going to the next level, right? We, where they, have take, they, they know the ministry, they know the gospel, and taking that gospel now to more uh, unreached places throughout Kenya and also in the nations that are surrounding. So uh, this here is a, a picture of myself and my father-in-law, who uh, he's the international director of Things to Come Mission now, and he and I took a trip to uh, Ethiopia uh, just to, to see the place, to see if there was what, what kind of work we would be able to do in Ethiopia. And so that is one of our plans is uh, to return to Kenya for four more years to make sure that the Bible school is, is, uh, has a good foundation and, and is able to continue and also to work with, well, let's see, I, I can go through the slides, can't I? Uh, work with the Bible school, make sure it's, it's solid. And here is the, the principal that I will be working with. And keep going. Okay, there we go. And uh, also working with a, a department that, we, that I uh, recently uh, developed, which is the church planting and mission department. And this is going to be working with the, the national church, the national board. And uh, we have about 40 churches throughout Kenya, and we are going to be working with uh, this church planting department in order to, uh, church, uh, to plant more churches in, uh, in some of the harder to reach areas, the, the places that are uh, even difficult for me to go. And so to use the, the, the churches that we already have to now grow the ministry. And so that, of course, is going to be working hand in hand with Kenya Grace Bible Institute as we are providing, providing pastors to go into the work, this department is going to be uh, helping to, uh, to determine, you know, how can we use them in the ministry. And we are, we are working with uh, Team East Africa, where we, we have been working in places like uh, South Africa, you can see that, uh, but Team East Africa is actually... Uh, more focused on Rwanda, Uganda, Ethiopia, and Kenya. Kenya is the, the hub. It's the, it's the most uh, mature work, and so we're going to be using the, the pastors and teaming up with the pastors in Kenya to now reach out into some of these other nations. And uh, because we, in, in Kenya, there, there are a lot of Christians, although it's not like the, the Christianity, I don't know, I, it's been a while since I've been in, in America. But I was going to say it's not like the Christianity here, but I, I sh will say it's not like the Christianity here in this church, where it's a Bible-based teaching, where you, you go through the Bible and actually teach what the Bible teaches, right? You're not teaching just what your own opinion is. And most of the churches in Kenya, people might call themselves Christian, but they are just there for a miracle, Right? They, they, the pastor does miracles, so they come to see a miracle. Uh, or they, they uh, are told, if you give to this church, you will be saved. Right? You, you, will you will get salvation through your gift. And so, yes, Christianity is in Kenya, and I would say that it's strong in, in our churches. Um, and so we're going to use what we have there to go into some of the other countries. And working with uh, some of the Filipino missionaries, uh, in uh, th they have joined Team East Africa. And this is actually a picture of me and my wife and my son and my mother-in-law. Uh, I think that many of you know Joyce Anderson. So Ben and Joyce Anderson are my in-laws. And then uh, we have uh, Roland and Beverly Improso. They have come from the Philippines to join the team. And they are have joined... Uh, a gardener in Proso, which is, he's standing right next to my wife. Uh, and so the, the three, uh, actually it's the four, it's two couples. They, they have, they are in Team East Africa and they are working uh, to, to spread the grace of, the message of the grace of God to more and more countries and to, to spread out uh, more and more. Um, 
pray for them as they are supported not only through uh, gifts from America, but they are supported one-third uh, from their home country, which is the Philippines. So a third of their support comes from their own countrymen, and they are using that to now go out. And so th that's the same kind of idea that we are going to be working in, uh, in doing with Team East Africa, is using the, the Kenyan pastors and raising support in Kenya for them to go so that they have support from Kenya, which that, that makes them responsible, not only to the American missionaries, but also to their own countrymen, right? They, they have that bond is not broken. They, they don't become American, they're still Kenyan, right? They, and they receive their support partially from Kenya. So that, that is kind of the goal. When we go back, like I said, four more years, uh, or less if we are able to. And the next time that we go out, we're going to be going to uh, possibly, potentially, could be, I hope, to Ethiopia. Uh, there is a, a, uh, a, an open door for us. We have uh, a young man, uh, young is relative. Uh, he, uh, on the top left, he is, uh, uh, his name is Fikra Bogali, and he will be working, uh, I well, right now, let's just say right now he is going through classes at Berean Bible Institute, and he is looking forward to um, to potentially joining us in the future. And so this is one of the trips that we, we were there. Uh, again, we are the Heaths with uh, Things to Come Mission, and in... Uh, if you could go back to our table and look at some of the pictures we have and some of the material that we have back there, uh, we have a, one of the things is a, a card. This here is for you. You can take it and put it in your house. Pray for us. And there are, I think we have some, uh, some trifold brochures for you as well. Um, keep, keep us in your prayers. Also, take a Heath bar. There's a... Uh, uh, <laughs> We have, uh, we don't profit from, from the, the Heath uh, candy bar, but you can take one for your, your enjoyment and also to rem remember us. And just as a gift to the church, the, the, the dish that contains the Heath bars is for the church to keep. So uh, you can use it in whatever you need to hold sugars or whatever, or Heath bars. You could, uh, you could put some Heath bars in there. Continual supply, right? Um, anyway, so let me just share a short, short three to five point sermon in uh, four minutes. Let's turn in our Bibles to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Yeah, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, uh, and let's just go to, um, there we go, yeah, 17, verse 17, we'll start there. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, starting in verse 17, I don't know if you can get that on the screen or not, but it would be nice if you could. Um, 2 Corinthians, I even have to find it in my Bibles here, 5, verse 17, and it says here, uh, therefore, if anyone is in, let me go to a better version here. Uh, let's see here. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, that God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting people's sins against them, and he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors. As though God were making his appeal through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Verse 21, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, in that, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. This is a, 
a, a verse that um, I don't think it can be studied enough. I think that it has a lot of, of good nuggets in there. But in the time that I have, I wanted to just focus on uh, the first part. Verse 17, it says here that if, any was, if anyone is in Christ, what does it say? The new creation, what has come? Yeah, the old has gone, the new is here. There's other passages in Ephesians 2.10. It says that uh, for we are, his, we are his handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God has prepared in advance for us to do. Right? God has a plan for our lives. God desires us to do the work of the ministry. This is not just for us pastors. I'm not really a pastor, but they call me a pastor in Kenya. So I'm us pastors, right? I, there's some pastors around. It's not just for those in the official ministry, right? No, this is for, it says here, verse 17, if anyone is in Christ, who here is in Christ? Amen, wow, that's good. If anyone is in Christ, you not only are, you, you are new, a new creation, the old is gone, the new is here, but you also have uh, a duty. You have something to do, right? He says uh, that all this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ. So he has done the work to reconcile us to Christ so that he can give us a ministry. He gave us a job, right? To do good works. So, but just beyond, beyond good works, to be, uh, he gave us the ministry of reconciliation. And so I wanted to encourage you. This is for you. This is for all of us. Just like I was uh, on the street passing this guy who was calling out to me, Mzungu, Mzungu, stop, come and talk to me. I had my own things I wanted to do. I, I didn't want to talk to him. I, I, I get very uncomfortable with those kinds of situations, right? I would rather prepare in my heart and say, I'm going to go out and evangelize today. And then I, I go out and do that, right? <laughs> I would rather do that. When someone stops me and, and it's like kind of uncomfortable, I don't like that. It's, it's hard for me. But that's what we're called to do, right? And I wanted to just uh, end you with, uh, oh, I don't have time. But uh, Cal, uh, Nicholas Ludwig von Zinzendorf, he was a, a man who had a, the desire to become a missionary. Uh, and when he was young, this was back in 1700, so uh, when he was young, around 15, he and his, his mates, his schoolmates, they came together and they said that they would on every occasion confess Christ. That they would on every occasion confess Christ and seek the conversion of all sorts and conditions of men. Right? This is our call. Is it not? That on every occasion, confess Christ. Who is Christ to you? Right? That is a great question to ask the next person you talk to. Whether he is a Christian or a non-Christian. Whether he is saved or unsaved. Come to them and say, excuse me, who is Christ to you? And they say, who is Christ? I don't know. Who is Christ? Or they say, Christ saved the world. And then you can say, did he save you? Are, are you saved? Did, then it, it can create a, uh, some kind of a conversation. So that is my, my encouragement to you. Please uh, have, take the opportunity to greet us, talk to us, and uh, get our information in the back, and get, pick up a, a card. Thank you so much. God bless.